It's a Monday. That means yesterday was Sunday. That's normally how things work. Yesterday, my day started with going to church in Victory Santa Rosa and preaching at our church service, connecting with our church members. And that's always meaningful, you know, doing that. And then the day ended with having some friends over and uh, me making macaroni and cheese for Philip and giving Mano a bath. And I, I love just thinking about that because, uh, you know, you, you, you do this thing for the church that affects hundreds of people. It's like a big stage and people notice it. And then you do something for two kids that, you know, normally people don't know about or don't know anything about and even they'll forget. <laughs> but both of them have to do with the call of God on my life. And there's a way that in the eyes of God that there's a, both are significant. And today, Monday, part of the call of God in my life includes having to go get sausages. So, yeah, let's see that. Let's go. Lately, Carla's been having a tough time uh, feeding Philip specifically. A little bit tricky. You know, you gotta, you gotta notice eh, the emotions or the, the, you know, the tone of voice of your spouse. Because Carla usually just handles everything on her own, and she's amazing at it. But when she really needs my help, she let me know. She'll be like, "I really need your help with." XYZ and lately it's been feeding Philip and so I'm picking up some stuff that I know he likes uh, that's gonna be healthy well for the most part healthy hopefully good and uh, yeah you know there's this book I, I read before you know, called Courage and Calling by Gordon Smith we had to read it for this class we were taking and he defined finding your calling or finding the, the call of God in your life as, as three things. No? Sabi niya, it's, it's the call to have a relationship with Jesus, which matters because often we think of calling as my job, you know, like my career. No, that's not the first part. It's your relationship with Jesus. So even if you're unemployed, that doesn't mean you're not called or that there's nothing going on in your life. That's the first part, the relationship with Jesus. The second one is your specific vocation. For some people that changes, for some people that doesn't change. Uh, but the point is like where your, your your job or your schooling at the moment. But then he did something I've never seen in any book before, which was he added a third dimension to calling. So your relationship with Jesus, your specific vocation. And then thirdly, he said your immediate responsibilities. Like what is in front of you right now? What are you going through right now that you know God's put you in? That's part of your call. And that's why I can say that yesterday my call included preaching, my call included ministering to that young man and you know obviously seeing that he's going through difficulty and it also included giving Manu a bath or making mac and cheese for Philip because those were my immediate responsibilities. Just like now my call is uh, to go buy sausages. <laughs> yeah that's what I wanted to share in this vlog that how do we know that and what are the effects of that? And from my personal experience, that I know is not common. Most of, well, all of my professional career has been in ministry. I'm not saying you have to be in ministry, but I'm hoping and praying that whatever your career or line of work, that you know that you're in that line of work, accounting, video production, mar marketing, because God called you there. Just recently, earlier this year, I transitioned out from formally being a campus missionary to still being in ministry, but a different role. I think the first thought I would have is you have to know that God called you there. You know, it's, it's funny how I have friends, relatives, classmates from college and high school who when they found out I was going into ministry, 
at 21 years old, their response was like, Oh yeah, da, of course, si, si Joe magpapastor yan, halata naman. College pa lang, high school pa lang, ganyan na siya. Parang ganun. Some people thought that. A number of people were, were still surprised. Honestly, for me, ministry never was uh, on the horizon growing up. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it when I would volunteer and I would talk to people. People who grow up in church know this feeling, especially if their dads and moms are very active in church. The main reason why I didn't want to do ministry was because everybody assumed I would do it. It was always like, oh, you're going to be a pastor like your dad. Are you going to be a pastor like your dad? You do anything remotely religious, it's like, oh, wow, he's amazing, like his dad, you know. I just didn't want to do ministry because it was no choice, alam mo yan, or, or just to continue, you know, just for the sake of, eh, you know, for uniformity. It had to be that I was called to do it. Not my dad was called to do it, and now I don't have a choice, but, but what was I called to do it? Siguro, the hack for us today, how do you know that God's calling you to do this? One of the simplest ways, and obviously you gotta balance this, no, with the Word of God, with getting counsel from others. But one of the simplest ways that really helped me, when you have no choice but to obey. You, you don't have a choice. You know, you, you could do something else. There are tons of other reasons on the other side for doing this. Like, I could, I could, I could, but I just know I cannot do anything else. It's, it's, it's like what Martin Luther said when he made his stand against uh, the Holy Roman Emperor, you know, and and stood on what he had published and he said, here I stand, I can do no other. M my point is, do you know God called you there? Why are you there? Because if you don't, no amount of perks, of benefits, no amount of external motivation of people saying, tama naman ginagawa mo, will be enough. You're gonna run out, you're gonna feel empty, you're gonna feel drained. The opposite naman is true. No amount of discouragement, no amount of hassle. You'll get mad, you'll need to take a break, you might need to, to I don't know, uh, watch your favorite TV series or, or, or eat some comfort food, I don't know, hang out with people and fellowship. But you're gonna get back at it simply because you know, eh, saan pa ba ako And this is where I'm called. I'm just grateful for all the learnings the personal development, the professional development. The deepest lessons, I guess, would be the ones learned by experience, learned by correction. <laughs> uh, preaching, public speaking skills, definitely learned that on the job. Man, I was so bad. I remember one of my, probably my, the third sermon I was ever asked to preach, my youth pastor, <laughs> Pastor Rico, said, uh, Joe, I'm not gonna be there. You know, uh, could you preach? I was still a student. I said, sure, what do you want me to preach on? And he said, whatever's on your heart. Now, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that what that meant is you're supposed to pray and ask God what he wants to share to that people group. You know, I thought, whatever I want, what Joe wants, like whatever I'm into, okay, well, I'm taking political science at the moment in Ateneo de Manila University. And so I'm very interested in the political system of the Philippines and how the word of God applies to that. Now, he didn't check, no. Which maybe he should have. So I got up there on a Friday night in front of a few hundred uh, young people and gave a 50 minute lecture <laughs> on the word of God and political systems in the country. <laughs> Man, I put everybody to sleep. So go to my last thought, Lantana, guys. When you know it's God's call on you, there's really nothing wasted. Because, you know, I, I, I have felt that the man. Feeling like something failed. Feeling like you put so much and then you have nothing to show for it. Campus ministry, you'll get that sometimes. Students will ghost you or they'll go through something and you'll feel like, what's that? There's a lot of people here and then they're just like a fruit. But that's not the point. Eh. If you know that God called you, then you know that it will bear fruit in time. I remember when I was going into campus ministry and I was telling, I was in the US and I was telling this Filipino who had been in the US for like 30 years at this point about this plan. And he said to me, uh, Joseph, you're wasting your life. You're wasting your life because di na magbabagong Pilipinas. Alam ko, naniniwala ka na pag na-disciple ang mga bata, pag nakilala na si Jesus, magbabago pa ang bansa, hindi na yan magbabago. 
Sabi niya, maniwala ka sa akin Kaya nga ako lumipat dito Dito sa Amerika may pag-asa Dito sa Amerika may pagbabago Diyan, sayang lang yung buhay mo Kaya huwag ka nang bumalik Ito na lang gagawin ko para sa iyo petition kita dito Kunin kita sa negosyo ko I'll get you in my company And you can stay here Get a job here Eventually, you'll get the documents you need to stay And I just remember being so Angry <laughs> Angry na how could you write off An entire nation that way How could you say na, Yun lang, wala nang pag-asa, wala nang silang pag-asa And I said to him I'm, I need to turn down your offer Thank you, I know you just mean the best for me But ito na lang gawin natin You believe what you believe And I'll believe what I believe And you give your life to whatever you want to give your life to And I'm gonna give my life to this And history will tell us lang, which one of us was right and which one was wrong. What about that? It was a very awkward dinner after that. And uh, <laughs> I, I got down to the car and kept a stoic face the whole time. And then when I drove out of sight, <laughs> I turned the corner. I stopped and I, I started to cry into the steering wheel because I was like, Lord, Tama ba siya? <laughs> Wala na ba talagang pag-asa ang Pilipinas? Ano ba ginagawa ko dito? Thank you po. And there is that feeling sometimes and maybe it's not you know necessarily nation building or whatever. It's just like, is there hope for my family to, to make money? Is there hope for me here? Uh, yeah, and I just remember that assurance from God that day. And uh, tuloy lang. Go lang. Nothing's wasted and nothing's thrown away if you know that God called you to do that. Whether it's something big and grand like planning an event or something small like giving your kids a bath <laughs> or buying them sausages. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anything you get from this bald guy rambling but really I pray that you find that call from God on your life and it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to be something grand but you just know this is what God called me to do maybe it's a big project you're working on in your company and you're so burned out I pray that you'll get the energy from knowing God you called me to do this so tuloy lang kapit lang or maybe it seems like it's something so mundane washing the dishes cleaning the floor the call of God includes our immediate responsibilities. And when you find that, you're gonna grow professionally, personally. You're gonna find relationships that will enhance it. And nothing's wasted. Oh, let's get the sausages now. You know, face shield. It's a Philippines. Only in the Philippines, no? We're the only country in the world. That requires a face shield. You know, last year, and Segura last talked the last year, uh, while my wife and I were in the States, just go to her vlogs, and the backstory We were there for six months, and people were asking us, Are you gonna stay in the States? Now, people here were saying, Do you, Why don't you stay there? Na? It's better there. Her family there was saying, Stay there. Na lang. And, um, we actually thought about it. It was a very quick co calculation though. But we thought about it. We were like, okay, if we stay here, you know, seems like the, at least where we were, you know, the pandemic is being handled well. We could get the vaccine faster. Like all of these different reasons for staying. And then we looked at the other side. But to go home to the Philippines, and that's where God called us. And that was it. You know, there's like a million reasons, not a million, but a few, few reasons here, several reasons here, and just one reason here. God, God called you there, and that's it. When you find the call of God, it just cuts through the confusion, the many voices, and I pray you find that also. Well, let's go. Let's get these boys their sausages. <laughs>